All right, so today I'm going to be walking you through this landscape, and I don't want to say that there are rules to painting the landscape, but there are definitely some things that if you are aware of will increase your chances of having a successful painting. Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. I'm Chris Fornatero here to help simplify oil painting so you can get better faster. All right, before we jump into the tutorial, if you like this video, if you like this channel, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow. If you want to see the full in real time version of this painting tutorial, I have that on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. All right, now this is a painting that a Patreon student of mine, Rob, did before watching my Patreon video tutorial on painting the scene. And here's a second attempt at painting the same scene after watching my full length video on Patreon. And I'm really surprised at how much improvement he made just over the course of one painting. The reason I started this Patreon and showing full length video tutorials is that I remember how much I got out of it when I would watch my instructor when I was first starting painting. Sometimes you have to watch somebody go through it to kind of see how they solve certain problems and get the painting to look a certain way. All right, let's jump on into it. All right, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna look at my reference photo here and I wanna identify the major value planes. Now, what are the major value planes? In landscapes, most of the time, certain parts are going to be certain values. Like your sky is going to be your lightest plane, followed by your ground plane, and then any slanted planes like hills or mountains are going to be a little bit darker, and your darkest value plane is going to be any upright objects like houses, trees, people, stuff like that. Now, yes, there are exceptions like snow and stuff, but in general, you can rely on this to be true. Now, when you're using photos, it might be difficult to identify these. Looking at a landscape in a photo is a lot different than looking at a landscape in real life. So you might have to push things and adjust things to make a good painting. Don't feel like you need to copy the photograph exactly. You're not a camera. You're not a photocopier. You're an artist. So you're gonna have to make decisions and change things to make a better painting. Also, be aware of different filters and effects people can put on their photos to make things seem a little off. Like for instance here, when I look at the sky, it seems a little darker than it should be. And I'm gonna guess that the photographer probably put some kind of filter to darken the sky. This is pretty common because when you're taking landscapes, it's hard to expose for the right lighting for the sky and the ground. Like one's gonna be lighter than it should be. This is why I suggest if you're taking your own photos, take a photo that's exposing for the sky and then another photo that's exposing for the land. But looking at this photo, our barn is definitely our darkest value, which is great. And then our lightest value is the sky if we take out that filter. And you can see the ground right below the barn here is definitely definitely lighter than the hill behind the barn and the mountains behind that. So everything seems to be working pretty well. Now the focal point of this painting is going to be this little window in the doorway here. And this is gonna be the focal point because we have this really light value, which is our ground plane value, right next to our darkest value of the barn. And whenever you have a really light value next to a really dark value, it's gonna create a harsh contrast and the viewer's eye is gonna be drawn towards that. Especially when it's the only area in the painting that that is happening. Now let's say if there was like another window in this barn or the barn next to it, I probably wouldn't put it in because I wouldn't want to take away from the main focal point. Now that we have a focal point, let's see if we can create a composition that guides our viewer's eye to that focal point and around the rest of the painting. I actually got pretty lucky here in this bottom right corner. There's this nice triangle shape in the grass, which is actually going to act like an arrow pointing us to the left of the canvas down toward the barn. And on the left bottom corner, we have this other dark triangle shape that's going to act as a buffer. It's going to kind of cut that corner off and keep us from falling down off into the corner of the painting and shoot us back to the right up toward the barn. And once we're in the barn, we're going to hit our focal point and then there's this nice road leading off to the right of the barn. So we're going to follow that and then there's these posts which is some good detail work that's going to catch our eye and bring us up towards the mountains. And then we're just going to ride the edge of these mountains up to the left and then the other ones behind that up down to the right and we're all through the painting. Okay, let's paint. Right, I'm going to tone my canvas with a wash of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And I want to do this to get rid of the plain white canvas because it's really hard to gauge your values when you're starting on a plain white canvas. Everything that you put on that white canvas is just going to seem really dark because it's right next to white. And I'm going to draw my composition in with this same ultramarine blue burnt sienna mixture. Now there aren't any real tips or tricks that I can tell you about drawing in your composition. This is just good old fashioned drawing skills. So always be practicing your drawing.
Now, some painters like to start with the furthest element in the scene and work their way forward. I've done this a bunch of times, but today I'm gonna to do things a little different. I'm gonna start actually with the focal point in this barn and work my way out. So I'm gonna block in this barn with a very dark value. Remember, this barn needs to be the darkest value in our painting. And I'm not worrying about detail yet. I'm just getting a base general color and value to put there. My goal is to cover the entire canvas with paint. I just want a general color and value for each one of my major planes. That way I can have them all there together and compare them and see which ones I want to make lighter and which ones I wanna make darker. After the barn, I'm gonna to move to this hill behind the barn. Now remember, this hill needs to be lighter than our barn, but it can't be too light. It still needs to be darker than our ground plane and our sky plane. Now, I know there's a lot of other different colors and values going on in this hill, but I'm not worrying about that right now. I just want a solid color and value to put there as a placeholder. And I'm gonna err on the side of making it too dark opposed to too light because it's a lot easier to lighten something as you're painting opposed to darkening it. And moving on to the mountain behind this hill, you can see it's very blue and it's very cool. That's because it's really far away. This has to deal with atmospheric perspective. If you're not that familiar with atmospheric perspective, I've actually made a video on that, which I'll put a link to right above. But in short, atmospheric perspective is the idea that as you move further back in space, certain colors are gonna drop out. Like the first color to drop out is yellow and then reds and then you're left with just blues. That's why these mountains in the far distance are reading as very blue. Now the mountains behind this need to see me even further so I'm gonna add some white to it to make the blue less vibrant which is gonna set those mountains a little further back. Now, I don't want to make these far mountains too light because I still have to leave room for my sky plane, which needs to be my lightest value. My sky should still be lighter than the mountains. Now, after I get my sky in, I'm going to move back down to the ground plane, and our ground plane needs to be our second lightest value. So it needs to be a little bit darker than our sky, but still lighter than this hill behind the barn. Again, I'm going to err on the side of making it a little bit too dark because I know it'll be a lot easier to lighten it up later. And okay, we got our whole canvas covered with paint. This is great. This is where we want to get to. Now I can look at everything and decide what I need to change. And the first thing that pops out at me is this hill behind the barn. I definitely need to make it a little bit lighter. I need to introduce some more greens, some cooler colors. So that's what I'm going to do. Now take a look at my brushwork as I'm painting this hill. I'm going in the same direction as the slope of the hill, which is going to help me translate its form, but it's also going to help point the viewer's eye down towards our focal point of the barn. All right, since I made that hill a little bit lighter, that's gonna affect my ground plane, so I need to push that a little bit lighter too because it needs to be lighter than this hill behind it. Whoa. Kinsey got a little scared. So where was I? Oh yeah, the ground plane. This ground plane needs to be lighter than your hill. So I'm gonna do that and also be aware of how I'm doing my brushwork here. I get a lot of people asking me like, how do I paint a field of grass? You know, it's so flat and I do, I use the vertical strokes, you know, what's going on? My grass looks weird, it's just so flat. How do I do that? My advice to you is to keep the grass very simple with horizontal strokes when it's in the distance and as it gets closer to you, introduce more colors, especially more warm colors like, like reds and, and yellows and save your vertical strokes for the patches of grass closest to you in the foreground. This will help create depth. It'll help it from being boring or too flat. Last thing you wanna do is go in there and try and paint all the grass with a bunch of small little vertical brush strokes. Okay, now it's time to put some detail into our barn and a little bit's gonna go a long way. I'm just gonna suggest some of the boards here. I'm gonna put in our focal point. I'm gonna add in some warm reflected light from the ground bouncing up onto the eave of the house. Now, as I finished that up, I realized that this mountain behind the hill here wasn't sitting far back enough. So I knew if I wanted to push it back farther, I need to make it cooler. 
So I did, I mixed up some ultramarine blue and white and made a little bit more blue, which pushed it further into the distance. After that, I put a little bit of snow on these mountains and boom, we have a painting. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you took away some things that you can implement on your next landscape to make it better. Again, if you wanna see the full version of this painting video tutorial, you can find that on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments section. Again, if you like this video, if you like the channel, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Whoa, you're still here. You made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like it. In that case, you should hit the subscribe button. You'd also probably like this video too. And this video. Please pick one. All right, this is getting awkward.